just so everybody knows, uh, with the recording, it will only be posted to this group and the, the people that are a part of it. So obviously the group today, and then if we add anybody else um, along the way, but this is an invite only sort of uh, deal here. Um, the Lorax, okay, uh, why is that, Kirpa? I mean, there's some obvious things there, but that's a good one, I like that. Ken Robinson, champion creativity within education institute. Oh, cool. Goes deep with me. So a bit of a mentor, perhaps, maybe. Bill McKibben, constant champion for climate action. Nice. Okay, so we're going, we got a mix of real world and, and fictional here. I like it. Had, oh, Padme from Star Wars. Yes, you, uh, Sabrina, you answered this question in your harness, your hero journey. Um, and that was... Of course. Oh, MCK, of course. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Corn. Um, yeah, I love Padme from Star Wars. I actually just watched Return of the Jedi. Uh, kind of just, just like a falling asleep to thing over the last four or five nights. And uh, um, I might just go watch the the whole run of the movies. I love Padme. That is awesome. Corn. <laughs> you know, I think MCK somehow you got like celebrating avocado not too long ago too <laughs> in one of our sessions. So I, I like this uh this food celebration. And the regenerative piece. Very nice. Okay. Uh anybody else, if you have it, go ahead and, and pop it in there. So we're gonna kinda kinda carry forward. And um before I introduce myself, I actually want to pass the stage over to uh just a, a wonderful human and um dear friend and budding partner in sam reader and um, of course representing wonder so sam if you want to just come up and and say hey uh you are also the curiosity of course but uh yeah just jump in and say hello for a minute yeah hi everyone real pleasure to be here thanks so much and uh, it's been a long time chance since i've seen those introductions so it's mm. too long too long but yeah, curiosity won't won't unpack that just yet. But uh, yeah, pleasure to see you all here. You may already know who who I am, but just as a quick hello from me, um, I'm one of the co-founders of Wonder, and I think there's so much relevance as to what the introduction of that session is and what you're doing with the icebreakers, and of course why we're here today. Uh, a long conversation that Chance and I have had before around kind of the the systems that would have us think differently and feel a certain way and suppress our natural instincts and abilities. It goes very deep with me. One of the icebreaker answer that I gave was of someone who really championed the piece against um, like a social system to do with education whilst it's critical. I just wanted to share a little bit as to why we started Wonder and why, why I'm really excited about today is I feel learning and having those safe spaces with trusted people who've got so much knowledge and experience and their own personalities is a real powerhouse and superpower towards what we want to do as people and the change we want to make so with wonder we're creating and we're on a mission to create a very safe space with trusted peers to find others of shared values so so we can build personal and professional skills but i know today is very much more about who we are as human beings as well so I'm really looking forward to the conversation and getting to know you all a little a little bit better. But uh, from me, hi there, Curiosity, one of the founders of Wonder, but certainly leaning into my curiosity uh, alter ego today more than anything. So pleasure to be here. Cool. And this group is pretty intimately familiar with the alter ego, so you're in pretty good company um, in that regard. I know Sabrina's getting to know uh, to know hers, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and uh, Let's carry on. All right. So you know me. I'm I'm Chance. Uh, I am uh, a co-pilot of the Viridescent Mothership, aka CEO, uh, but that's my less favorite term. Um, and uh, I'm I'm really excited to be here uh, with Wonder and and kind of running this network series because Sam and I for a long time have wanted to to come together to to really bring each other's platforms and spaces into each other's platforms and spaces a bit because we have a lot of um, kindred kind of shared values and uh, and in some ways designs too. We take a, a slightly more creative approach and they take a slightly more real world approach, which is why I think we have a good balance together. So I'm really excited to be back in this world together. Um, so we're going to just kind of jump right into it. So uh, I want to 
as we go, I'm going to introduce you to a new friend here in the Veraverse. This is SalesFox. So SalesFox is what we call a luminary. And luminaries help guide us through kind of our mind, emotions, state of mind, state of emotion. Um, and SalesFox specifically guides us through the idea of value creation. So helping change makers value themselves and create value for others. SalesFox leads a prosperous movement to do better for people, each other, and planet, our magical home. This is growth gardening, not infinite growth. It's mindful marketing, not bottom line BS. The reason why I introduce you to SalesFox right away is SalesFox is going to kind of guide us through this whole networking series and then into a, a more robust workshop that we'll be offering after this, uh, this first run is over. Um, this character actually has proven really, really valuable for um, us at Viridescent and some of our partners in just valuing ourselves and, and whether that's a, an economic thing or just a life thing. Um, this this character has been very compelling. So we'll pop in and out as we go along the way, um, but just kind of wanted to, to let you know he's, he's around, hiding, hanging out, and sometimes may show up and, and tell you to really shout from the mountaintops how awesome you are, because you are change makers, you are doing good for the world, and you deserve to prosper as a result, not just be selfless do-gooders all the time. Um, sometimes we've got to win the economic game too. So um, on we go. We're going to kind of get right into it. So with the kind of intimate size of our group today, we're just going to do full group. We're not going to do breakouts. And I was kind of leaning that way anyway, even if we had a slightly larger group. Um, I think uh, it's very interesting to kind of build a larger group dynamic because, um, as you may have noticed in some of the um, the pre-information for the event, we're going to be kind of forming our, our little hero band here. Um, so we'll have our, our individual identities as, as humans and alter egos, um, but we'll also have um, this kind of collective effort. And this is an effort that, that uh, will absolutely grow. This band will grow as, as we go along. We've got some good plans for what is to come. So we'll start nice and intimate. All good kind of rebellions, movements for change start as just a small little group, right? So um, our first session, conversation, is going to be one that uh, most of you are somewhat familiar with. So we're gonna we're gonna do it one more time, uh, <laughs> but we're gonna add in some new things along the way today that I think will be really intriguing to you. Um, and I'm I'm excited because we have Sabrina who is is new to this. I think you're halfway through, maybe th maybe three quarters of the way through the Harness Your Hero journey. So her alter ego is is taking shape, but I don't think you've had the opportunity to share it with um, with others in a live environment like this, right? So I'm very excited to be able to do that. And some of you have been um, in our world in the past and uh, had been busy with other things too in your back, uh, which is very exciting. So it will be good to kind of reconnect with your alter ego again. So first question is, what is your animal personality and why? So it's a favorite, one you have a strong connection to, maybe it's just because they're cute, that happens sometimes, but it's amazing what can come from that starting point and we dig a little deeper and all of a sudden we're, we're in a much deeper place. So here's some tips for kind of how we'll dive deeper. So since we're doing a full group, I certainly can kind of facilitate and help us go deeper, but don't be afraid to play the role of hero guide, um, especially Kirpa, Paul, MCK, right? You've all been in our world a lot, so you can help. And um, for those of you that don't know, uh, MCK, also known as the present squirrel, is the questions master. So he's pretty good at helping people go deeper. So here's from some tips, um, you know, we'll talk about maybe some favorite memories, um, how we maybe feel when we like watch or think about this animal, and then what character traits we identify with. So let's, uh, let's kick it off. Who would like to be that brave soul to go first? Yeah, yeah, Kirpa. Hi, everyone, the deliberate life force here. Um, I embody traits of a sloth, if you could imagine. Um, I just share their unhurried and thoughtful approach to life and, you know, preferring to savor the present moment. Uh, Chance, you're muted, sorry. <laughs> Hey, no, thank you. That's as tight as and succinct as I've I've heard you uh, just nail that on the head. So that's cool. That's that's like progress in my mind. I love that. Okay, uh, we'll we'll probably dig a little deeper. But Kirpa has been hanging out. She's a hero guide for Viridescent, so she's done this a lot. So uh, let's go to whoever would like to go next. 
I can go next. All right. Um, uh, I am Paul, also known as the provocateur, um, and my animal personality is the tiger. And I identify with the tiger for a couple of different reasons. It is my Chinese zodiac animal. I was born in the year of the tiger. Um, but I also just kind of really love the tiger in terms of, I think that they are stealthy. They tend to be a bit introverted, which I tend to be a bit introverted, but they also have strong familial relationships, um, which I like. And um, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, the fierceness of the tiger and the strength of the tiger are, you know, traits that I really like and don't necessarily identify with completely, but, um, but and I really love those, those traits. So there you go. Very nice. Anybody have any questions for Paul? It's interesting. I think this idea of having kind of a mix of things that you can relate to and things that you don't is kind of why the alter ego is so powerful, right? Um, yeah, yeah, Sam, jump in. Oh, yeah. I'd just like to jump in there, Paul. Um, nice to see you again. I know we've spoken before, but I was interested in the the way you describe it's about the stealth side of that. Um, if I could ask a question around elaborating on how you feel, how you resonate with that that kind of wording, that the semantics of that is quite interesting. I think you're on mute, Paul. Sorry. Class, isn't it? Um, I think there's a part of that stealthiness that is, uh, you know, that has to do with being an observer. You know, I think I, sometimes I think about the tiger being in the jungle, just sort of observing everything around him um, and only kind of like coming in and striking when the time is right. Um, so I, I kind nice. of like that part of it. Um, you know, I think I tend to be a bit more of an observer as well and kind of come into conversations when I feel the time is right. So um, so there's a part of that that I identify mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as we as we carry on, um, just kind of building upon um, the idea that there's some things with this animal that we relate to and some we don't. Sometimes people get stuck in this idea of like, well, it has to be like a perfect fit, right? Or or they want to aspire for something else. And I think it needs to be a little bit of both, right? You want some things that you have and that it can help enhance what you already have because so often we already have what we need. And we're going to talk about how the animal personality can help us kind of... Um, value ourselves, stand up for ourselves, um, maybe even be a little bit selfish uh, once in a while, because as change makers, we tend to be more selfless. And sometimes that's not actually balanced and doesn't actually help others as much as it could if we valued ourselves a little bit more. So um, I like uh, I like a little bit of both of these things. Okay, who would like to jump in next? I would like to be the next person. Alina, yeah. Yes. Okay, hello guys. Ho hope everyone is fine. So actually, I was having eat, so that's why I was like out and I could not can't open my camera. Next time, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. So my uh animal is pa uh, panda, and I am the empowerment. So basically, I remember when I was having this call with um, Chan, he was like, "Which animal do you like?" And I'm like, "I am actually very scared of all the animals." So there's like none I was uh, kind of able to relate to, but. Uh, for some reason, my friends used to call me panda, maybe because I have like a lot of dark circles and I love eating and I'm like just sitting everywhere and I'm just eating. So that's how he was like, okay, I think we can go with panda then. Uh, apart from that, um, I graduated like two, uh, one and a half year ago. I did my software engineering and I was a lot into technical communities where I was conducting events to uh like teach some basic skills to people from where they can like just start off their career and that kind of those kind of thing and i think we, and because of that i got the name of the empowerment as well because i have been trying to focus on that thing a lot at least in my community so yeah that's it about me so glad to have you with us, Alina. And I, I love that we have some panda friends here. Um, that's a, ah, it might be a first, uh, actually. So that's that's pretty compelling as well. Um, I also know one of my favorite things about uh, Alina's alter ego building was that um, you said one of your favorite places to work is actually in bed. 
And I actually love that. And I, I can understand that sometimes um, that it can just be lovely, right? It's, it's just nice to be like comfortable when you're, when you're doing stuff. Um, the beauty of, of working from a computer, right? It's not all perfect, but there are some good stuff, things that come out of it. Yeah, Lena, go ahead. Also yeah. yeah, also like the fact that I use, I love to sit on the ground <laughs> all the time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, Alina's alter ego avatar is the panda like sitting, sitting down in, in the grass and in the ground, which is cool. Um, or maybe we'll throw it up here at some point. All right. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Um, <laughs> so um, I, my name is Sabrina. I'm the brightness. Um, and my animal alter ego is the sea turtle. Uh, two reasons. One, one of my favorite films is Finding Nemo, and I love Fresh, who is um, very go with the flow, which is what I'm trying to embody. But also, I love how adaptable the sea turtle is. They can live in the their home is the sea, but they can be outside and they can explore outside also. So I like to, um, and that's something I definitely identify with is feeling safe in my home, but then also going outside and exploring the world a bit. So yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we're so glad to have you. Um, and Crush, Crush is a badass. <laughs> I love. It's one of my favorite parts of that whole movie. Um, if I was feeling a little more bold, I might do my my impression. Uh, maybe maybe it'll pop out. We'll see. Um, because yeah, he's got a very distinct uh personality. That's that's very good. Um, okay. I love that specifically because you're celebrating a childhood love sort of thing, right? Like it's a cartoon and. You love it and you should be proud of it and you should value that because that's a good thing, right? So often we're like, oh, you know, cartoons are for kids or, oh, creativity is is just like for fun and can be a waste of time. And um, we couldn't disagree more here in the Viraverse. It is essential, um, especially, you know, change makers. We're trying to build a sustainable world. We need creativity. We need different stuff. We actually need fiction and creative worlds, I think, more than we realize because, we're trying to change this real world thing. Well, humans have built a very flawed real world system in a lot of ways, right? And so we need to be thinking way outside the box to build new ways of, of living and being and working and all that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Ella, uh, would you like to jump in? I know you're on a, a spotty internet connection. So um, let's see if you can jump in or you can do chat too, whatever you prefer. Hi, I'm Ella and I'm the James of Stream. And my animal personality is the bear. I really like the bear because it symbolizes um, traits. It has traits that um, relates to me. For example, the nurturing tenderness of the bear, the playfulness, um, the courage. The bears are courageous as well. Uh, they are also they also have strength as well. That's why my name is like gentle strength and they are calm, which I believe um, are parts of my attributes as well, considering where, I, where I'm from and um, the situations I face, the challenges I face every day. I believe that um, all this helps me to cave through this, those challenges and come out better. That's why I really like the beer. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. And I was yep. just going to say, so That's imagine it. a um, a very calm kind of Zen bear sitting, standing, walking right in the heart of the fire, right? The eye of the storm. Um, that is certainly Ella. And uh, we're, we're inspired by her a lot with that. Um, okay. Uh, I know MCK, you messaged me and said you were going to be in listening mode for a bit. Are you out of listening mode or still just listening in? Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'm listening. I'll be on camera in just a minute, uh, but I can quickly introduce my animal. So the squirrel is mine. And I think it embodies a number, a couple of different things about me. Uh, number one, on the positive side, I think squirrels are all about kind of getting those nuts. It's like grabbing the insights, being able to kind of store those away figure out how there's an opportunity uh, to, to weave or to share uh, or to offer in, in bringing those things to other people. Uh, I think on the other side, maybe the uh, shadower side you know, of it is the, uh, 
idea that the squirrel is really good at getting distracted. Uh, and so sometimes it's really easy for my focus to get divided. And uh, so, yeah, I think about those two aspects of the squirrel for me, uh, the one that's about collecting and sharing, and then the other side that's about sometimes a little bit too easily getting distracted by things. So cool back. Yeah, oh think, yeah, Paul. I, no, Paul, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, please jump in. No, I'm just I'm just gonna make a comment on uh, on the squirrel because squirrels are the bane of my garden. <laughs> and I would say the one thing about squirrels that is sort of distracting as well is, is they have a tendency to just get into everything, whether you want them to or not. <laughs> <laughs> which I can sort of see as part of MCK's personality. <laughs> you know, it's interesting too, because MCK is the, the question guy. And so like it, it fits in a really compelling way because you always have a question. You can always ask somebody a question. And to Paul's point, sometimes questions are hard, right? To, to be asked and to be faced with and all that. And it's actually why I love MCK so much because I think change makers often have such a conviction about things and we need to be better at asking questions um, to, to really help pe make people a part of our movements for change and all of that. Um, yeah, MCK, I saw you on mute. Did you wanna, oh, there he is. He's like, all right, now I got something to say, let's go. <laughs> no, 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 I just wanna, show my smile because uh, I'm laughing at what Paul had to offer. So uh, I, I accept, you know, I take it all, you know, it's good to get feedback. So. <laughs> so cool story about uh, MCK. He built his alter ego in a very impromptu organic way. Um, actually as a listener to a live podcast episode that we were recording and um, we had gotten some of the elements. We went through the, the few different things you saw in the opening video, what some of those elements are. We'll dive into some of the others in future um, weeks as we go through this series. But uh, we came up with some some names as we were trying to kind of name the character. And I don't remember if it was you or if it was somebody else, but it was like, you know, it's like, it's like I'm thinking like it's like like the present squirrel or something. And everybody just like burst out laughing at first. Like it was this like big hilarious thing. And we kind of like pinned it there. And then we kept working at a name and it was kind of like all of a sudden MCK is like, I, I think that's it. Like, I think that's it. And we're like, hell yeah, that's it. Like, that's so unique. And, and it has an element of like charm and fun. And, um, but it does capture well, um, capture very well. And I think what we're gonna talk about with valuing ourselves, kind of getting those, those nuts and collecting and, you know, and growing and things like that and being prepared really big for valuing ourselves. Um, so more to come um, on that. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, I'll, I guess I'll go with mine real quick. And then we're going to take uh, just a, a kind of mindful minute or two here uh, on the safari in Africa as provided actually by Ella, who's in Nigeria. Um, so we'll, we'll take a, a pause to, to watch a little bit of nature and go back to the uh, or go to the other side with the next question. But before that, uh, my animal personality is the wolf. Um, I brought a deer in here as of late too. Um, and I think both of them share in this idea to try to be a little bit like fleet of foot. But for me, the wolf specifically is all about just loyalty um, and kind of working with a pack mentality. Um, but sometimes wolf needs to break away and be kind of a lone wolf too. Um, and that's me escaping out into nature solo um, and just being with, with one with the world and, and earth and myself a bit. So um, that's the wolf. They can be fierce, but they're also very like loving creatures. Um, and, uh, I think the relationship between humans and wolves is a really complicated one. Um, and it represents that kind of human earth connection. It's a complicated one. So, um, all right, let's, uh, let's head to the safari, enjoy it. And we'll see you back in a minute or so.
All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna take a little stand against the machine real quick. So we use a YouTube video for this. Uh, so in our world, um, we have uh, kind of this growth gardening mentality and a very like mindful marketing approach. Uh, I see these things and I, I think, you know, like couldn't the pop-ups wait until the video ends, right? So that we can enjoy the content. Cause I just love that. And I was thinking about you, Paul, I know you love, um, you have a love for Africa. Um, was, how did it feel to see some of that scenery? Yeah, I was going to say thank you, Ella, for bringing back some really nice memories of my uh, safari last summer in Kenya. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, I love um, I love this when I first saw it. And uh, Ella shares some of the, the actually both of them are from Ella to open our one on one meetings each week. She plays um, videos of of uh, nature and a little bit of music. And um, I appreciate it a lot. So um, now we're going to kind of pivot into valuing ourselves. And I'll build off of what I as I just gave YouTube a little little ribbing uh, a little bit is this idea of, of valuing ourselves and, and how to do it. I think one of the things I've been really grateful about um, our collaboration with with Sam and, and Wonder is this idea of creating kind of safe spaces where it's about building authentic connection and supporting each other. It's not necessarily about like sales pitches and, and over marketing and things like that, right? But that doesn't mean we can't do that stuff. We're just gonna do it patiently, right? And in a way that's very like intentional and appropriate and, and fits the timing of things. And so now I wanna talk about how we use this animal personality to do just that, how to value ourselves. So I'm gonna throw our slide back up here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm really excited about this conversation because I think the idea of being able to connect with an animal in nature they have a power that we don't, right? It's it's different. We have powers that that animals in nature don't as well, of course, certainly from like this, like maybe an intellectual standpoint, I suppose, um, though I think a lot of that is just kind of a, an ego thing too with, with humans. I think that there's a very natural way with which animals present power and integration and connection to the natural world and their value um, is certainly just to be there, right? And to contribute. And, you know, most, most animals, there are some like invasive things that happen, but most animals exist in a symbiotic relationship with nature. And I think that that's what change makers um, really need to figure out how to do to be successful, is how can you be um, kind of standing up for what you need to do to either survive or thrive, but also be like helping your community, your work, your industry, um, you know, your family, whatever it may be. So we're going to talk about how your animals can help you help you uh, value yourself. We will evolve this as we go through the next few weeks to uh, start thinking about others and, and all of those things. But right now, let's be selfish. I want you to think just about you and how you can value yourself. And um, I actually, I think I'll, I'll keep us at, at least to start in the same order and go to the deliberate life force because she's done some really compelling work and in, in being that like selfless change maker and figuring out how to like stand up for herself so that she can be more of what other people need too, but it's balanced for everybody. So you can see some, some kind of guidance on here, right? So how can your animal survive? It's really interesting MCK that you went with the squirrel and the collecting nuts because that's one of my examples here. Um, <laughs> ahead of winter, right? Um, and then also, how can you play the part of your animal in a real life scenario? Um, not just like in the abstract or being being the animal out in nature and what they do in nature. So that's the way I would look at this question is twofold. What does your animal do in nature that um, kind of shows their value and their worth? And then how can you bring that into a real life scenario? So over to you, DLF. Thank you. Thank you, the designer. Well, just embracing the traits of a sloth, um, I value myself by prioritizing, you know, mindfulness, self-care, um, fostering gratitude and self-reflection. Um, through the sloth's unhurried approach of life, 
I feel like I can create personal value by setting realistic goals and also kind of embracing my unique strengths, um, leading to greater self-confidence and fulfillment. Um, talking about a sloth in nature, you know, sloths survive and thrive by conserving their energy through their slow um, metabolism and deliberate movements, um, finding safety in food sources, primarily in trees. So they're, they're kind of like a wallflower in a sense. Um, to really embody the sloth survival strategy, um, you know, just prioritizing energy conservation within oneself, not burning yourself out. Um, and focusing on tasks that really align with my personal values and creating a peaceful environment um, conducive to like reflection and relaxation um, while also like looking for actively looking for opportunities to really like align myself with nature and connect. Very nice. And I actually think you set a, a really compelling tone. Uh, is there anybody in the room that is is feeling like they're dancing with burnout a little bit. So, okay, so Kirpa's one. Yeah, Sabrina, maybe a little bit, okay. Any, anybody else? Eh, all of us, maybe just a little? Except for retired Paul over there. He's like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> As you should be, my friend. Okay, so yeah, it's it's there a little bit. Uh, yeah, Ella, jump in. Uh, or oh, are you just raising your hand for burnout? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so something to kind of keep in mind as we, we talk about this, because one of the best ways to value ourselves or one of the best ways to heal burnout is to value ourselves and what we need. That's super, super important. Uh, okay. Who would like to go next? Sloth value strategy. Love this. It's like a framework in and of itself. All right. Who's going next, Paul? Yeah. That's a, that's a hard one to follow. I mean, you've done, obviously done a lot of work on <laughs> thinking about that. Um, yeah, I think I think in terms of um, you know one of the interesting things about tiger obviously is that it's such an endangered species, <laughs> um, and so you know it needs to have its fierceness and its strength to survive and to thrive in the uh, in its environment, and you know it's being constantly um, invaded by humanity, <laughs> if you will. Um, but I think that. I think for me, you know, I think that I don't always get to, but I aspire to that fierceness and that strength and bringing that into the work that I'm doing around event sustainability and some of the other nonprofit work that I'm doing um, with the Giving Exchange, which does work in East Africa, um, supporting uh, children, women, and communities. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's that, again just to go back to what i had said earlier it's that ability to kind of observe your environment and and um, understand how to come into a, a situation in a fierce and strength you know strong kind of way um and you know being the provocateur one of the ways that i think that i do that is like mck asking hard questions challenging conventional wisdom uh, challenging people to be more ambitious uh, than they might want to be sometimes. And um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of where I am with it right now. Nice. And speaking of the uh, the burnout element, tigers like to sleep a lot, right? Cats, cats, <laughs> and they're sleeping. <laughs> and sleep is good. Sleep is uh, is underrated in our society, I think, though it seems like it's, it's a, on a big push. I see a ton of content on LinkedIn, but maybe that's just the algorithms knowing that I'm a parent and need more sleep. And it's telling me like, hey, check out this content. You'll love it because you need it, um, which maybe and, that's and one of the benefits of the machine. I don't know. Yeah. And good comment. T Tigers do value strategy. And, you know, one of my roles, even when I was working and continuing now is, you know, kind of being a strategic person and being about strategy. So, yeah, I identify that with Tigers as well. Paul is one of the wisest people that I've, I've known in life. And uh, so that's, that's uh, not surprising and certainly encourage people in the room to seek his wisdom um, on things and ask him some questions because he's got some good answers to things. Uh, okay, who would like to go next? I'll go yeah. next. Sabrina, yeah. <laughs> um, 
so with the sea turtle um i like that they were adaptable i mean kind of said this in the beginning but yeah, that they adapt. I like that they adapt to their environment, and also they don't stick to one place. They, even in the sea, they'll go to different places if that's where nature they're guided to. Um, and I think, with me, how I do that in my life is making sure that I'm present. Sometimes I feel like I'm guilty of sometimes thinking of either too much in the future or um, in the past of and not being in the present enough. So sometimes, um, so that's what I'm trying to embody with the sea turtle and I always have strategies. So for me, meditation, uh, listening to music, if I feel like I'm getting in my head about things too much is making sure I'm in the present. Because when I'm in the present then I know it's, I'm engaging with the moment and I know how to move forward, you know, yeah. <laughs> Any questions for Sabrina? So Sabrina, you know, given your animal, do you feel like you are constantly kind of coming in and out of your shell and dealing with that in terms of balance in your life? A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, especially when something's new, it's like there's a part of me that wants to hide in the shell, but I'm like, that's not how I'm going to learn. I need to come out of the shell and explore. And that's okay if it's in my own pace, as long as I'm moving ahead, you know, I think, yeah. <laughs> so Sabrina, Sabrina are the, are the, oh yeah mck no yeah go no it's all you yeah i was curious what uh what does it take to be present for me being present means being in i mean being in the moment and listening engaging even if it's just with me by myself listening to my own thoughts engaging with them um and it's not worrying because not allowing myself to get caught in my own head with worries and stuff and just because mm. i can't control the future or the past but i can't control the present moment and that that's comforting yeah mm. and i was hearing you say that you spend a lot of time in the past and the future when do you find yourself being able to get in that mode or what what are the kind of pathways to help you get to that space of being present? Uh, for me, I would say a key thing for me is mindfulness. With me, meditation, I make sure I do that every day, at least once a day, uh, because a lot of the times I can also, by being present, I can be like, okay, why are these worries coming up? Why am I feeling this fear? Is, okay, this is where it's coming from, facing it, and then moving forward with them, or putting it aside and moving forward and being like, that's not necessary anymore, you know? All right, yeah. so you've all of a sudden become an expert on presence. It's happening, right? So yeah. you're going to, uh, I hope, offer us some advice. So uh, it's interesting to have you talk about this is something you've struggled with, right? Being in the past or, the present, or in the future a lot. How have you gotten meditation to work for you? Because a lot of people will give up quickly on that, right? Um, is there any particular way you kind of like put yourself into it, anything you do while you're doing it that has helped you find some success in it, do you think? For me, I would say, because at the beginning I struggled too, but I would say start with maybe, even if it's just one minute of just, I would say, I know that this is maybe cliche, but staring at a candle and allowing your thoughts don't push them away being like because sometimes people think oh i have to try and think of nothing no it allows the thoughts to come up that's how you explore it um but just start with one minute and see what comes up and then just write it down let it go and 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 start there and if you feel like you're getting too in your head about something sometimes just having nice music or guided meditations will help that so it helps with your visualization yeah you have may have just created a new ritual in the Viraverse. If we have time, I'll come back to it. If not, I'll take it to the group chat after the fact. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. Like I said, you became an expert. Uh, that that just happened. Master here. Um, wow, nice. Okay. Uh, let's see who's next. I think we still have Ella, Sam, and MCK. Right? Who would like to go next? 
I could I could jump in. Yeah. Um, panda man, let's go. Share panda, panda. Share a panda with uh, Alina. Is she? Oh, she jumped. Yeah, she was dropping in and out. I think hey, maybe she was having no some worries. connection stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks so much for the conversation and, and for sharing there as well, Sabrina. But for everyone sharing, it's so interesting. I pro probably haven't thought through um, in a long while the, the the kind of attributes that I relate to so much with the panda, but um, more metaphorical, I think, from my end, more than Alina's in the physical side of things. But I feel the panda has this kind of like quiet, quiet strength about them. And I think their resiliency as well is something that I aspire to um, engender in my own life and um, listening to everyone's conversation and, and their own reflections on all the animals. Uh, I really can see the power of this kind of imagery um, that I think has, has has left me for a, for a while. So really enjoying the conversation and, and, and the thought processes that come with this. But yeah, I think the resiliency, the quiet strength of it, which is to you know, as, as someone who, um, yes, I think struggles with with confidence, but knows there's something that I believe in and want to bring bring to the world, but more facilitate in others, which is where Chance, you and I, I think, have a very strong bond and uh, loving this conversation. As I say, uh, I think that resiliency and quiet strength to try and bring forward something that may be rejected, uh, but but what more is there worth in life than to try for something you believe in so um i feel that those kind of those traits of a panda that quiet calmness but that strength and that resiliency is something that i really try to lean on as much as i can thanks for letting me share so there's an interesting meta thing happening there a little bit um i'll go to that but sabrina did you unmute did you have a, a follow-up or were you just unmuted already Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just hanging out. No, you were very quiet. So, okay. I wasn't sure if I caught it or not. Okay. So there's a very interesting thing I think that's happening there, Sam. So one, I, uh, it's interesting to hear you say that you uh, you struggle with confidence because that's never been my perception of time with you. Um, I think you've always felt like this kind of calming and, and self-assured presence, which is really um, appreciated. But I think what's interesting, what you did in there um, is you talked about like uh, trying because it's worth trying for. I think that in the the kind of climate space specifically, that type of change making, climate change, we're given this narrative of like race against time. And so we push ourselves really, really hard and all that. We can't control the outcome of climate change as individuals, maybe as a collective, maybe as a species, maybe, maybe we can. However, to me, honestly, I don't think it's about whether we can actually succeed in mitigating climate change or not. It's about taking the stand because it feels like the right thing to do and we believe in it. Whether we succeed or not, I think is kind of irrelevant um, because if it's too relevant, if we care too much, we burn ourselves out, we destroy ourselves a bit and we don't value our ability to actually just live and enjoy the beauty of the thing we're trying to protect to begin with. And so I'm really grateful for that perspective of you You try because it's what you believe in. Um, the outcomes, it's a, it, the outcome is the trying, right? And I, it's like the journey and the destination thing. I know there's different philosophies, but I do think yeah, every once that. in a while, change makers, just let go of the climate race. Just let go of it. Just, just let go for a minute. Even just a week would be really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate um, the section. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, that was a good share. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, Ella and MCK, who'd like to go next? I can go next. Uh, so I, uh, I actually don't know a lot about squirrels other than uh, what I think I know about them. So uh, I did a quick little look. And uh, I learned that there is a really interesting study that UC Davis did. Squirrels express four traits, activity, sociability, boldness, and aggressiveness. And I think what probably the first three, I mean, maybe maybe all of them are true, like the uh, getting in your face all the time when you don't necessarily want to be in there, is that call back to Paul maybe. Uh, but yeah, I think there's something quite special about bold and so the findings reveal that bolder squirrels benefit from their behavior, obtaining larger core areas where they concentrated their activity. 
And so I think what I really like about that is I do think there are moments where I can be quite bold and other moments where I'm not being very bold and that I probably would benefit from that boldness. So I think that is something that I would like to live more to. Uh, there's also six reasons to love squirrels. Uh, they chew for a reason, their nature's gardeners, and they have some zany behaviors that are entertaining to watch. So I think uh, chewing for a reason, you know, usually when I'm engaging with people, I do it intentionally and with reason. Uh, so I'm not asking because I don't care. I'm asking because I actually want to hear the answer. So that's sort of like my parallel, I think, for chew for a reason to nature's gardeners, kind of being around tending to different things, tending to different people, tending to different conversations and relationships, but seeing how they all come together, I think in a, in a larger collective uh, is something that really speaks to me and something that I do actively work on and try to do. Uh, and then I'm also a little funny and a little different and a little bit unique. So uh, yeah, zany, I think is something that, you know, also works for me. So I kind of like, you know, where that's going. So like you mentioned before, Chance, sometimes the unexpected things about the animals that we choose uh, have uh, a certain kind of resonance that we may only realize later on. So that's me and, and the squirrel. So not to get too like spiritual and, um, you know, uh, whatever, although maybe, maybe, yes, maybe I will get spiritual here. Um, I, I have started to wonder if these, these animal personalities are our reincarnation, uh, journey somewhere in there. Um, I, I just can't help. It just started to come to life for some reason. I never really thought about it like that, but now I'm starting to wonder, um, because maybe, maybe we already knew these things, um, and, or we've already had these things in another life, but we don't know it in this one yet. It's just interesting. Um, and maybe it's just part of the growth journey. And it's pretty cool that such a simple little creature like a squirrel can be so complex and represent such a growth journey for somebody as nuanced and layered and unique as MCK. I love every bit about that. Makes me really happy. Um, all right, uh, Ella. Also loving what Ella's doing in the chat, by the way, this, this strategy of the animal, um, that is awesome. Thank you very much. So your bear, how can your bear bring so, value? Um, for my personal, yes. Um, so me bears, the, they are um, basically peace loving animals. And for, in a way they are conflict avoidance, which also helps me personally because there are certain situations that may arise. Like I always tell myself, um, you can only control your actions, your feelings, or the things you say, you can't actually control the external forces around you. So I try as much as possible to remove myself from situations that tend to um, cause me any form of harm or hurt if I, if I can. And I also like the fact that they are like loyal animals and they are very appreciative, which is like paying it forward basically. I, I see that once when you appreciate people, irrespective of the little thing that they do for you, maybe someone helps you um, take away your place or something like that, and you're just appreciative to them. They it just brings some form of, it just has some form of impact on your life for, the, for that particular day. And I find that really, really helpful to me. And it just makes my day shine, basically. And on the other end, uh, we know bears hibernate in the, in the winter. So that helps me in a way in terms of sleep. And time I'm feeling um, burnout or feeling stressed, I just lay down, even if I'm not sleeping, I just lay down away from the phones, away from the computer and just relax, just monitor my breathing and see how I could recharge myself, just basically step away from the whole situation around. So those are the little steps I take to nourish, nourish myself 
and let's see my mind as well. Wow. <laughs> this is like round of applause. That was a pretty good good share there. Um wow. Uh you know, the bear uh is interesting. I heard an interesting I don't remember who said it or where I saw it exactly, but it was um it was about a bear. Uh maybe it was somebody actually sharing their their animal with me, but the idea that a bear um wants very little to do with humans, but we want so much to do with them. Um and uh, I I like that as a um, you know, right now in our attention economy, everybody's being blasted with so much stuff all at once, all the time, as Bo Burnham says, like a little bit of everything all at once. And it's okay to just step away from it and, and, you know, remove it from your life. You can do that. Um, it does, it's not rude. It's, it's self-preservation. It's, it's priorities, it's boundary setting. Um, and a bear is, is good at boundaries or you would hope so anyway. Um, so that's very, very compelling. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, we're winding down. Uh, I'll hit on mine just really quickly because um, I can really relate to something that Sam said uh, as well um, as believing in something, kind of doing something you believe in. So for me, the wolf um, has helped me a lot as a very sensitive soul. Uh, being Becoming an entrepreneur, becoming an artist has been actually really difficult for me, right? Because it's new, it's different. It's taken me a while to get practice at it. You face criticism and uh, judgments and opinions and all these things, and th that's not inherently bad. Um, but when you're sensitive, it can be tough to endure. The wolf is fierce, and the wolf has really helped me um, stay stay afloat, stay passionate, stay believing, and and now um, kind of in a sprint a bit as a wolf um, with the belief and the momentum. And uh, so I'm grateful to my wolf friend um, very much. So. All right, so we're winding down to just our last couple of minutes here. So uh, wonderful what's in the chat. Uh, to Sam's point, yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely pull this chat down and put it into a nice um, nice piece uh, that we can publish to the group chat um, and maybe share outwardly too. There's some compelling stuff in there. That's very cool. Um, so let's look ahead to next week. So, um, we're going to move into the second kind of core element of the alter ego's journey, which is the elemental philosophy. So this is good. You kind of have a little more time to think about it um, ahead of next week's session. So that is your favorite nature element and why that is, right? So it can be a particular type of flower, a rock, uh, um, the mountains, fire, um, you know, one of the, the regular elements, that kind of stuff, um, and why you chose. But what we're going to use the elemental philosophy for, because what we found over the last few years of people building it, is it often ties into the way that we work and what we work on more than some of these other things do, amazingly enough. Um, it's really compelling. And so what we're going to talk about is how our element and that philosophy that comes from whatever element we enjoy can help us bring value to others, create values for others. And as change makers, that's certainly one that I think that piques our interest a bit. Like, how can we help other people? Um, because we want to help others before we help ourselves. And um, that's that's an admirable thing. So uh, we're going to do that next week. In between now and then, we, we have the, the group chat going in wonder, and we've gotten some good introductions in there. Um, and we have a little bit of a, um, a call to action for you to celebrate what we talked about today, which is share to our hero band chat and wonder one win where you valued yourself above all else from now until next week. Do it. Value yourself above all else, above everybody else. Um, just one one win. Um, you can share that in the chat. Um, and then your other um, thing that you can do is RSVP to next week's event. I'll put the link in the chat for that in a second. I actually want to update it real quick. So I'll do that and get you guys the updated piece. And um, you know, we'll see you next week. Anything anybody wants to say before we wind down? Sam, did you have anything you wanted to add before we transition to next week? just to reiterate that um i really appreciate everyone making the space and the time it's very precious i know to everyone and just wonderful to have the conversation i hope if we can well, we'll talk chance about how the group grows but i really don't want it to affect the the thread of this kind of safe area that you've all created and it's really powerful and it goes very deep so yeah wonderful to be, to be part of this thanks so much for letting me get involved that's all i'd like to really share
And that's Thank where you. Salesforce would jump in and, and say, if, if the garden is grown the right way, mm. the growth is not a bad thing at all. Um, and mm. it'll, it'll carry on. The spirit will feel the same. So we do want it to grow because these like seven to 10 Zoom rooms, right? We want them to grow. We've got good things to say. We've got value to mm. create oh. each of us in this room and as a collective hero band. Um, stay tuned on the ritual that Sabrina created. Stay tuned on potentially what our Wonder uh, Wonderland hero band name is, but I think we'll do that together along the journey. So fun things to come. Thanks so much for the time. I'm going to put up a video about a, two minutes in nature if you want to hang around and watch it before you transition. But otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Finding Nemo made a bit of an appearance in there. I like it. <laughs> See you later, everybody. It's good to be with you today.